Hello, welcome back to Introduction to Globalization 1. This is Unit 3. This video lecture covers weeks 5 and 6. Now, as usual, let's review our class requirements. First, challenge the tasks proactively. Two, have various perspectives. Three, guess, listen, and read to learn the topic. Four, think logically and critically on the topic. And five, speak and write to state your thoughts, okay? So weeks five and six are going to learn the supply chain. To begin with, what is supply chain? In business and finance, supply chain is a system of organizations, people, activities, information, and resources involved in supplying a product or service to a consumer. The first task of weeks five and six is here. Interact. Please post your answers to the following questions and respond to at least two classmates posts on forum of Manaba. Question number one, where was your favorite t-shirt made? Two, what do you do with clothing that you no longer wear? Three, do you ever buy second-hand clothes? Why or why not? The deadline of your posting on the forum is here, 31st of May, 10 a.m. A second task is to watch and listen. First, watch the life cycle of a t-shirt. The link of this TED Talk education YouTube video is available on Manaba. Two, write down your reaction to the video lecture in your notebook. Three, write down what you did not understand in your vocabulary book. Four, discuss with your study partner about the content and check the answers of the quiz questions. The study partner list is available on Manaba, so please go and check and try to contact your study partners as soon as possible. Five, take a test on Manaba's test later. Here are six quiz questions for the life cycle of a t-shirt. Please watch the video and try to write down the answers of these six questions. And you should take a test after watching. The third task is to read and comprehend the two articles. The first one is the afterlife of American clothes and the other one is Uniqlo sustainability. Both reading materials are available in one file on Manaba. So please download it and read. The task number four is to research and write your essay. Think about what you learned from the video, which is the life cycle of a t-shirt and the readings, the afterlife of American clothes and Uniqlo's recycling program, and your own research and write a short essay on one of the following topics. Be careful, you don't have to cover two topics, just only one. You have to choose one or two, okay? The topic number one is, how has the environment been affected by the creation of cheaper garments and the willingness of the public to buy them? The topic two is, what are some ways to decrease the environmental impact of your fashion? When you write a short essay, here is a writing assignment requirements. Please use the following format when you write an essay. Format has to be Microsoft Word. Use a Times New Roman 12 points. Length, within a full sized paper one page. Due, Sunday, 31st of May, 10 a.m. And submit your essay to Manaba's assignments by the deadline. 
Now, let me provide you with the steps to do research for an excellent essay for the assignment of weeks five and six. I think many of you have experienced researching for writing an essay, but in order to help you become a better essay writer, I would like to help you with the following tips. First and, first and foremost, read the essay question and thoroughly understand it. If you don't have a full understanding of what the essay question is asking you to do, you put yourself at risk of going in the wrong direction with your research. So take the question, read it several times and pull out the key things it's asking you to do. The instructions in the question are likely to have some bearings on the nature of your research. If the question says compare, for example, this will set you up for a particular kind of research during which you'll be looking specifically for points of comparison. And if the question asks you to discuss your research focus maybe more on finding different points of view and formulating your own ideas. This time, the questions you have to focus on for an essay are these two, and you have to choose one of these, okay? Two, take notes. As you walk through, your reading and video lecture. Take notes as you go along rather than hoping you will remember everything you have read. Do not write down everything. If you write down too much, you risk writing an essay that is full of irrelevant material and getting lower grades as a result. Be concise and summarize arguments in your own words when you make notes. Note taking is a major part of the research process, so do not neglect it. Your notes don't just come in useful in the short term for completing your essay, but they should also be helpful when it comes to revise, revise, revising time, so try to keep them organized. Three, start formulating your opinion. As you walk through readings, Think carefully about what you have read and note your own response to different opinions. Get into the habit of questioning sources and make sure you are not just repeating someone else's opinion without challenging it. Does an opinion make sense? Does it have plenty of evidence to back it up? What are the counter arguments? Like this, you need to ask yourself with the uh, written materials. More importantly, plagiarism is the unethical practice of using words or ideas of another author or researcher or your own previous works without proper acknowledgement. And plagiarizing activities have to be absolutely and definitely avoided. Four, avoid plagiarism in research. Researchers have easy access to material and data on the internet, which makes it easy to copy and paste information. If you want to use another author or researcher's statement, you have to paraphrase or summarize what the original source states. In addition, clearly indicating the source of information in the text and reference list is essential. Without doing these steps, your essay will be regarded as a stolen work, even though you did not intend it to do so. Professors usually can find easily whether you plagiarized or not, and many of the evaluators use plagiarism checker when they evaluate your essays. Five, be careful with wave-based research. Although it is fine to use online resources to give you a bit of an introduction to a topic you have not covered before, be very careful when using the internet for researching an essay. 
and do not trust too much. For example, Wikipedia can be edited by anyone. So it is not advisable to use the internet as the basis of your essay research. It is simply not academically correct enough and you do not know how out of date at the particular resource might be. And also, please do not, do not Google the topic you want to research, but try to access these reliable sites for academic journal articles and news articles. Please pause the video now and write down the information if necessary. You can also access by using Japanese. Lastly, look out for footnotes. In an academic publication, whether that's a book or journal article, footnotes are a great place to look for further ideas for publications that might help you find useful information. Plenty of information can be hidden away in footnotes. And if a writer is disagreeing or supporting the ideas of another academic, you could look up the text in question so that you can include their opinions too. Six, cite appropriately. Citation and using reference as evidence is very important in order to persuade a reader with your opinion backed up with statements from the experts in the field and survey data. It is important to cite sources you used in your research for several reasons. First, to show your reader you have done proper research by listing sources you used to get your information. Two, to be a responsible scholar by giving credit to other researchers and acknowledging their ideas. Let me give you an example situation when you want to include citation. One, the expression is very original and unique. Two, the data or statement expresses the points very precisely. Three, the citing such expressions is necessary for your essay argument. For these situations, you can use direct citations. And there are two ways to cite quotations from works of others. The first way is short quotations, and the second way is long quotation. If the length of the quotation goes beyond four lines or over 40 words, it is considered as a long quotation. In the next slides, I will provide you with some examples to help you understand what I mean better. Short quotations. If you are directly quoting from a work, you will need to include the author, year of publication, and page number for the reference. You can introduce the quotation with a single phrase that includes the author's last name followed by the date of publication in parentheses. The example sentence one includes a short quotation. According to Jones, parenthesis, 1998, comma, quotation mark starts, students often have difficulty using APA style, comma, especially when it was their first time. Quotation mark, parenthesis, page 199, period. The example sentence two goes, Jones, parenthesis, 1998 found quotation mark students often had difficulty using APA style quotation mark closed parenthesis page 199 semicolon what implications does this have for risk, uh, teachers question mark Both examples one and two include author's name in the text of the sentence. If you do not include the author's name in the text of the sentence, place the author's last name 
the year of publication and page number in parentheses after the quotation, like the example three displays, like this. She stated, quotation mark starts, students often have difficulty using APA style, quotation close, parentheses, Jones, comma, 1998, comma, page 199, comma, but she did not offer an explanation as to why, period. Long quotations. When you are going to cite a long quotation, place Direct quotations that are 40 words or longer than four lines in a freestanding block of typewritten lines and do not put quotation marks. Start the quotation on a new line, indented five spaces from the left margin. Type the entire quotation on the, the new margin and indent the first line of any subsequent paragraph within the quotation five spaces from the new margin. Maintain double spacing throughout but do not add an extra blank line before or after it. The parenthetical citation should come after the closing punctuation mark. Seven, cite appropriately direct citation. Now we are moving on to how to do an indirect citation by using summarizing or paraphrasing. If you're paraphrasing an idea from another work, you only have to make reference to the author and year of publication in your in-text reference and may skip the page numbers. APA guidelines, however, do encourage including a page range for a summary or paraphrase when it will help the reader find the information in a longer work. Here are two examples of indirect citation. Example sentence number one, according to John's Parenthesis, 1998, comma, APA style is a difficult citation format for fast time learners, period. Example sentence two, APA style is a difficult citation format for fast time learners. Parenthesis, Jones, comma, 1998, comma, page 199, period. When you paraphrase or summarize statements from another work, you need to thoroughly understand what the original sentence means and express what you learned with your own words. I recommend you to use thesaurus in order to find appropriate synonyms for paraphrasing and summarizing. Please do not copy and paste the Google translated sentences because the meaning of the original sentences will be changed and this will not be regarded as summary or paraphrasing. Eight, use thesaurus. In order to find appropriate synonyms for paraphrasing and summarizing, here is a thesaurus dictionary site you can use for free on the internet. Synonyms are words with the same or similar meaning. It is extremely important to increase your vocabulary by adding more synonyms and antonyms, especially in writing. In order to write a good essay, great quality of summary and paraphrases should be included to support your opinion. Well, let's check your knowledge of the synonyms. How many synonyms of a buzzword, pandemic, can you say? Please pause the video and take a minute and think of the synonyms of pandemic now. Go ahead. Well, how many synonyms of pandemic could you say? Here is an example of synonyms for pandemic. The most relevant words are shown with darker highlight. Besides using thesaurus for synonyms, I strongly encourage you to use English to English dictionaries more often when you write an essay. I hope you understood how to research for your essay and you can get used to it as you write more essays throughout a year. Also, please ask me when you need help in writing an essay, while we meet real-time lesson, or through emails, 
and or Microsoft Teams chat. The real-time lesson announcement for EIS2 students. This is for the first year students. The class is Tuesdays and Fridays, but the real-time lesson will be held on 26 of May from 1040 to 11.10 through Microsoft Teams. Please sign in five minutes, at least five minutes before the lesson starts to check your group information, okay? And for EIS4 students, Tuesdays and, Tuesdays and Fridays, uh, you have many um, course members, so I need to check more, but uh, I'm, the real-time lesson is currently scheduled on both 26th and 29th of May from 1.30 through 2 p.m. through Microsoft Teams. If I'm going to change the information of the real-time lesson, I will let you know through Manaba and Microsoft Teams chat, okay? And also EIS for students, please sign in five minutes, at least five minutes before the lesson starts in order to check your group information. Then see you in the next live lesson. Good luck.